Ladies and gentlemen, Vishy Anand, what a legend. He never ceases to amaze us. You can never write him off. I saw the five time world champion just a few days ago. He was giving a master class in our uh, training camp for the Indian team in Chennai and he looked in such sublime shape. When I saw him, I immediately felt that wow, he's in such good shape. He's going to do really really well in his upcoming tournament. But even I couldn't predict what was up in store. Vishy started the Superbet Rapid and Blitz Cup with a 5 out of 5 score. Here is a fragment from that tournament, his game against Levon Oronian with the black pieces in the 5th round. Vishy started with the black pieces, Levon started with 1 e4, e5, bishop to c4, trying to avoid the Petrov defense which comes after uh, knight of 3 and knight of 6. Knight of 6, d3, bishop c5. His opponents can't really be sure what Vishy is up to because he hasn't played in such a long time. So his openings are a bit of a surprise and uh, it went into this Italian uh, opening with knight of 3, d6, short castle, short castle, c3. The typical Italian move order but having committed d6, black cannot get d5 right away which is uh, another mainstream uh, theoretical variation. But Vishy just goes bishop b6 after just uh, 30 seconds of thought. Knight bd2 and pawn to c6. Bishop b3. It's also possible to play a4 in uh, these types of setups to give some space for the bishop and get the knight to c4. But bishop b3 is a somewhat more old fashioned way of playing this. And uh, it prepares knight c4, it prepares to take the bishop to c2, rook e8, rook e1, and now bishop to e6, developing the bishop and uh, forcing white to decide what he wants to do with his bishop. He can either take it to c2 or trade the light square bishop. White went bishop to c2. Black develops his final piece out, knight bd7. And now there's a bit of a fight for the center and white usually starts with something like h3 here. But if you start with h3, you're spending one important uh, tempo and this can give black the opportunity to play d5. So Aronian started with d4 right away but this allowed black to play bishop g4 and exert pressure on the d4 point in any case pinning the knight h3 bishop h5 g4 this weakens white's king but on the other hand it also it also makes this bishop very passive and uh, takes a life out of this bishop the bishop is forced to go to the g6 square and it basically goes uh, passive at this point so White has uh, weakened his king side, but in return he has got uh, Black's bishop passive, and this is usually a very good trade-off. This idea with h3 and g4 not recommended usually for beginners, but in Italian and in especially the Grandmaster games, this is an extremely common theme. So Aronian goes ahead with it, and now he takes d into e5, knight into e5, knight into e5, and at this point Vichy had the choice to either take with this pawn. But this would be uh, this would be a bit passive, but on the other hand, it also gives black a good uh, shot at equality. And uh, white has weakened this f4 square because of these pawns on g4 and uh, e4. So the black knight has scope to get there with knight d7, knight f8, knight d6, or knight c5, knight e6, and finally to f4. And usually this bishop, which has been condemned to passivity, will come into the game with f6 and bishop f7. But Vishy chose to take with the rook, which was a pretty interesting decision. A pretty interesting and critical decision because now it sets white with some real concrete problems and white has to decide what he wants to do and how. Black is threatening to play d5, black is threatening to open up the center after which this bishop will come into life and uh, black's pieces will also have access towards white's king. So this was a critical point. Aronian here thought for three full minutes and a bit more than that and came up with knight to c4. This was the critical point in the game. So feel free to pause the video here and try and figure out what black would have played. So this was a critical point and here Vishy took knight into e4. This was a really important point and Vishy took just 30 seconds for this move which highlights his level of confidence. After having won four games in a row, this was his fifth game and he was brimming with confidence and took knight into e4 in just 30 seconds. The point being that 
if white took knight into e5. With knight c4, white had attacked both the rook and was also eyeing the bishop on b6. But Vichy just ignored it and took knight into e4 because if white takes knight into e5, then uh, black doesn't take bishop into f2 check, after which black doesn't really get much. King to g2, bishop into e1, and uh, now after queen into e1, d into e5, bishop into e4, it is actually white who is a piece up, white has an extra piece. And this was also the variation I was calculating at first when I was watching the game live. But it turns out that after knight into e5, you don't take with the bishop. Instead, you take with the knight attacking the queen and also threatening deadly discard checks against the white king. So knight into f2, the white queen has to move. And now black just simply takes knight into g4 check, king g2 and knight into e5. Black has three pawns against white's exchange. White has a rook, but black gets a knight and three pawns. And black, white's king has been completely opened up. This is probably what Aronia either missed or underestimated and uh, the wheels just came off completely for white after knight into e4. He continued with knight into b6, trying to get away with just being a pawn down and getting compensation with his pair of bishops and the dark square bishop. But Vishy just ignored it completely and played another amazing move. Again, feel free to pass the video and try and figure it out for yourself. Vishy took knight into f2. He just ignored this b6 knight. He just ignored what it was doing, whether it was attacking the a8 rook or not. He just went ahead and took knight into f2. The point being that if white captures the knight, then there's queen h4 check. The king has to go to f1. It's the only square which protects the even rook. And now just bishop into c2, attacking the queen. The queen has to go to d2 in order to stay uh, within uh, the protection of the e1 rook but black just has bishop to d3 check and ultimately the white queen and the king, white queen or the king has to give up the protection of the e1 rook if queen into d3 then after queen into e1 check king g2 rook e2 check everything comes with a check and now king f3 is queen f2 checkmate and white loses a lot of material otherwise so this was the point of this whole combination with knight into f2 King into f2, queen h4 check. Beautiful, beautiful concept by Vishy. Once again, he played this after just two minutes of thought. He played knight into f2 with just two minutes of thought. And uh, here the game was pretty much over. Aronian continued with queen d2. Vishy just takes the piece, keeping it simple. And uh, he had given a masterclass very recently on... Uh, how to convert better Persians and he didn't just give a master class but out here he has been proving it he has been showing how it's done literally with five wins out of five queen into b6 rook into e5 and here comes our uh, familiar theme the discard attack the discard check knight into g4 check the king moves and now just knight into e5 and uh, black has won three pawns after this combination. He's not only won three pawns, but the white king is completely open up, opened up. His cover has been completely blown. So knight into e5, bishop into g6, h into g6, queen into d6, trying to reduce the deficit a bit. Yes, he managed to get one pawn back, but he couldn't really do much against uh, his king safety. So queen b5, queen d1, the knight goes to d3. These two pieces still completely undeveloped. Aronian played b3 here and resigned after queen d5 check. This rook is coming to e8 next and it's only a matter of time before the white king gets checkmated. Aronian ended the game with 16 minutes remaining out of the 25 minutes which might be a bit disappointing but has been a common feature in his games recently. He's been playing really really fast but look at Vishy ending the game with 17 minutes. What a commanding win. 5 out of 5 by the five-time world champion. What a legend. Vishy OP.